The great Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law professor, author of the new book, War Against the Jews, How to End Hamas Barbarism. I also cannot recommend enough his book, The Case for Israel. It is brilliant. He takes all the accusations against Israel in the, in the own words of, of other people who hate Israel and debunks each point. It's a wonderful resource. Mr. Dershowitz, how are you, professor? I'm doing good. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Who has the rightful claim to this piece of land, Professor? Well, there's no question that uh, the Jewish people uh, have the right to a certain part of that land. <laughs> In 1938, the Peel Commission divided the land into a Jewish state and an Arab state. There was no such thing as the Palestinian people at the time. Um, and uh, the uh, Jewish people accepted it. Palestinian people rejected it. 1948, the United Nations divided the land, giving the vast majority of it, the arable land, to the Arab people. Uh, again, the Jews accepted it. The Palestinians rejected it. Palestinians rejected a two-state solution in 67, in 90, in 91, in 2000, 2001, 2005, 2008, and even most recently when President Trump uh, offered uh, uh, what essentially was a two-state solution. So uh, the Jewish people, uh, certainly the Israeli citizens, are entitled to what is now Israel. I'm sure you've seen this map going around. It has four maps of Israel, and it shows how uh, uh, Israel used to have only this little bit, and now they claim this whole big chunk, and that's proof of further colonization by the Jews. What do you make of that? What it's proof of is that Israel is attacked and if the Palestinians had accepted, or the Arabs had accepted, the uh, 1948 uh, UN proposal, Israel would today have a small sliver of land uh, along the Mediterranean River, the Negev, which is not arable, desert, and um, uh, an internationalized Jerusalem. Uh, the expansion of Israel is 100% the fault of its Arab neighbors. Every time they attack, they lost land. That happens mm -hmm. all the time. The Russians uh, got land from Germany during the Second World War. Uh, virtually every country that has declared war in other countries uh, has lost land. And so mm -hmm. Israel's current land is not a function of colonialism. By the way, who is Israel a colonialist for? Poland, where, where Jews escaped, Russia, uh, the Ukraine. Uh, Jews hated those countries. Uh, they didn't come to uh, Israel to work on their behalf. They came uh, to Israel to establish uh, a Jewish state, one that had been in existence for many years uh, up until the time they were expelled. But Jews have lived in what was then Palestine, now it's uh, Israel. It's always been Eretz Israel to the Jews. Um, from the beginning of time, there's never been a time in recorded history that Jews haven't lived there well before the birth, birth of Muhammad or the establishment of Islam. Yeah, in 610. What, I, I, let me ask this question first, and then I want to go back to that to thousands of years ago. Who are the Palestinians? You mentioned they didn't exist until a certain period of time. What does this word mean? Who are these people? Well, they are Arabs. Um, they're Arabs who came from Syria, from Egypt, from Jordan. Um, when Mark Twain went to what the Romans called Palestine, Palestina, uh, not, a, not an Arab name, not a, a Jewish name, um, not based not based on the on the Philistines. It's a corruption. Um, when Mark Twain went there, he said the land was empty. Uh, there were just foxes and rats running through the land. It was uh, not being taken care of. And then the Jews came in the 1880s and 1890s and, and turned marshland into uh, uh, trees and uh, and farmland, and that attracted lots and lots of uh, Arabs from Egypt, from Lebanon, from Syria. Uh, from Jordan, and they became, quote, the Palestinians in 1938, when the leader of the Arabs um, in uh, that area, a man named Husseini, was asked to testify in front of the appeal commission, no thing is the Palestinians, there is no Palestine, we want, a nation. we want there not to be a Jewish nation. Hmm. What was this area like when the Muslims controlled it in 636? And 1187, and then we can maybe go a little later with the Ottoman Empire in the 1500s to the 1800s, uh, before Mark well, Twain even visited. What was going on there then? About the wars between Christians and Muslims and Jews. Um, and then it became a, 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 a useless, unarable, 
um, land for many, many, many years. Uh, you know, there were people living here. Uh, there were Jews living in Sephat, uh, in Hebron, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, people forget this, Jerusalem had a majority of Jews as its population in 1840, before there was even political Zionism, before Herzl was born. There were a majority wow. of Jews in Jerusalem, majority of Jews in Sephat, a large number of Jews in Hebron. There were always Jews. Professor, what do you, you spent your life at Harvard. What do you make of Harvard and UPenn and all these other schools uh, trying to toe this line of free speech and allowing pro-Palestinian, et cetera? But it's not just now, it's been like that for decades. How do you deal with that, Professor? Well, I don't mind pro and that's fine. Uh, represented Palestinian students when they wanted to put up a flag in memory of Yasser Arafat after he died. I then went to the demonstration and I said, it's too bad Arafat died at time a timeless that her de his death was untimely if he had only died four years earlier maybe peace could have been achieved but I'm not anti-Palestinian I'm anti-Hamas look Harvard has a terrible history toward Jews uh, for years it excluded uh, Jews then it created quotas allowing only a certain tiny number of Jews to be present when I came there in 1964 there were hardly any Jewish faculty no Jewish deans no Jewish president and indeed, mm. the school had a policy of not having Jewish deans or presidents. In the 1930s, they gave honors to Nazis. They sent one of their um, high-ranking officials to a Nazi celebration of uh, a university in Britain, something that Oxford and Cambridge refused to do. Um, Harvard has had a very bad history toward the Jews, and it needs a reckoning. After George Floyd uh, was murdered horribly, Harvard and other universities said it's time for a reckoning with our history uh, in relation to black people. Now that 1,400 people have been murdered and 30 students uh, groups have supported the murder, said the entire fault is with Israel, it's time for a reckoning, Harvard's history of anti-Semitism. Uh, Harvard was built, 20, 20th and 21st century Harvard was built in large part on Jewish faculty and Jewish students. And um, it's been a one-way relationship. Uh, I gave 50 years to Harvard. Larry Summers gave 50 years to Harvard. Some of the great names of Harvard, Stephen Jay Gould, Robert Nozick, Pinker, you name it, all, all prominent Jews. And has Harvard reckoned or given back? No, it's been a one-way relationship. And I've cut mm -hmm. off that relationship. I will no longer contribute money to Harvard or to Yale or to the City University of New York unless and until there is a reckoning with the history. City University of New York Law School has become the Der Sturma of law schools in the United States. Uh, its faculty voted unanimously to boycott uh, Israel. It had as its graduation wow. speaker a virulent anti-Semite. Uh, it has made Jewish students feel like second-class citizens. This is the City University of New York paid for by taxpayer funds, mm. and it has to stop, and we have to well stop supporting it. Which leads to my final question, Professor. Why, why the support? Why, why do so many people support Hamas, Palestine, uh, th this virulent anti-Semitism? What's the knee-jerk default response? What causes that default response in most people? Let me tell you what it's not. It's not Palestinians or Palestinian. People are pro-Palestinian concerns. They, you know, in favor of the Kurds of the Uyghurs, they would be in favor of other It has nothing to do with the Palestinians. It has everything to do with the nation state of the Jewish people. These are virulent anti-Semites, anti-Jews, anti-American, anti-Western, anti-free market. It's anti. It's not what they're for. They don't care about the Palestinian people. If the Palestinian people were being oppressed by anybody other than, quote, the Jews, they would move on to a different issue. So it's not the Palestinians. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not uh, Hamas. It's the hard left being virulently anti-American. Scratch an anti-Israel deep enough and you'll see an anti-American. Mm. 30 seconds, sir. Why do most Jews in America vote for Democrats? Because of history. Uh, you know, we're used to the New Deal. Um, it was always questionable. Uh, Roosevelt had a very mixed record when it came to, uh, to the Jews. Um, uh, but... Jews have historically voted Democrat, my parents did, uh, and it's hard to change. 
think a lot of Jews hmm. reconsidered. Uh, but now I suspect with President Biden seeming to be very supportive of Israel, probably the next election Democrats will continue to vote for uh, is, uh, Jews will continue to vote for Democrats, although not as not as much and not as knee jerk as they used to. Hmm. Interesting. Alan Dershowitz, go buy his nor more uh, his, his brand new book just about to come out, and then also I highly recommend the case for Israel. Alan Dershowitz, thank you, sir. Thank you for a great interview. I really enjoyed it. Thanks.